Welcome to Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, and we want to give a special welcome to everyone, and especially all of those of you that are tuning in for the very, very first time. We're celebrating now our one year anniversary of being here on the show, and we're getting thousands and thousands of downloads every, every week. And this is all about real estate investing. We talk about single family houses, how to find the deals, how to fund the deals, how to sell them fast, how to get your business automated. We also talk here on the show about how to own the real estate in between your ears and take control of your life so you can own a whole lot of real estate out here. And so, as I said, I'm known as the Private Money Authority. And before we bring on our special guest today, and if you've been tuning in before, you know I've had some amazing guests and experts here on the show as it relates to real estate investing. Before I bring on my guest today, I've got a free gift for all of you that are tuning in. And that is I've got an on-demand class right on the internet that you can watch and learn how I raised $2,150,000 in funding for my real estate deals when I was cut off from the banks. And I'm talking about how to use and locate private money. I'm not talking hard money here. I'm not talking mortgage brokers or banks, but how to get funding for your deals, regardless of your credit, your experience, your verification of income. So here's the free class for you to check out after the show. It's right here at www dot j connor j a y c o n n e r dot com forward slash money podcast go check it out it'll show you the five steps how to quickly get funding for your deals well my guest today i'm so excited to have on here he's a friend of mine we're in a um, fellow mastermind high-end mastermind group for real estate investors and this guy right here started right at 10 years ago back in 2010 and he does wholesaling, he does uh, flipping, and to date, he's already done over 1,000 transactions and deals, so he's running a multi-million dollar a year uh, uh, operation, and so this year, uh, he and his team will be doing about 150 deals, and uh, also, you want to check him out on Instagram, he's got over 60,000 followers over Instagram, and uh, growing every day. So with that, it's my pleasure to welcome to the show, Mr. James Hawk. James, welcome to the show. How are we doing, sir? I am fantastic, James, and thanks so much uh, out of, you know, taking time out of your day to join us here on the show. No, thank you for having me, and uh, I really, uh, it's my honor to be a part of uh, the one-year anniversary show. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, folks, we typically go here on the show about, well, I'm not going to say how long we go, but hey, it won't be too long. We'll, we'll keep everybody <laughs> sticking around. But I want everybody to know that it's important to hang around until the end of the show because, uh, James, you got a free gift for everybody. And that is you're going to be uh, giving all the audience members that want it a free recording, a free recording uh, that you teach have the fastest way for people to get their first $10,000 check in real estate. Is that right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm putting on a YouTube live training that I'm going to record um, and give away. And it's basically me 10 years of doing this. If I start all over, um, what would I do knowing what I know now to get to $10,000 as fast as possible? Awesome. All right, folks, we'll stick around to the end of the show and uh, we'll also put it in the show notes as to the uh, website address to where you can go get that free training. Now, uh, the, the topics that uh, you're passionate about, uh, James, is you're passionate about all types of sales and marketing as it relates sure. to real estate investing, how, how you find the deals, uh, how you sell the deals, and you're also passionate about how you build the team and how you automate the business. But before we get to those topics and you've given us your own experience, how did you get started in real estate investing and uh, what's your story that leads up to where you are today? Sure, sure. I can give you the, the shorter version. So I worked for a bridge company, a steel fabrication company. Uh, we actually, we were on like mega builders on the Discovery Channel. We did the Woodrow Wilson in DC. So I was a supervisor there. I had a friend that was in real estate. I planned on actually becoming an agent and it turned out he was wholesaling. He wouldn't really share with me much of like what he was doing, how he was doing it. He didn't want any competition. So I just went out digging around what I could find on the internet, you know, back in 2010, which it's nothing like it is now, obviously. And, you know, found out like the concept of wholesaling, what he was doing. 
started digging into it. I was working a night shift at the time. So during the day before I would go to work in the gym, I would be working on doing this business. I got, did my first deal for $4,000 and uh, my second deal, I made 20 grand and I'm not saying I recommend this, quit my job and then just went all in. <laughs> <laughs> now, so, so that, what year, what year were you starting your research and, and, well, what year did you do your first deal that you made 4,000? 2010. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, yeah, as, as the old, and you're, you're too young to remember this commercial. This goes back to the day uh, when they allowed cigarette companies to actually advertise on television. And so there was a cigarette company called Virginia Slims, and their slogan was, you've come a long way, baby. So, James, <laughs> you've come a long way since 2010. So just to make sure we're all on the same page, different real estate investors and entrepreneurs have different definitions of really what the wholesaling business looks like. Sure. So what, what's your definition of a wholesale deal and what does your wholesaling business look like? Yeah. So I would say as far as a definition of a wholesale deal, I mean, going out, it doesn't need to be direct necessarily an off market property. It could be a property on the MLS for all I care. I mean, but it's essentially locking up a property at a discount putting it under contract, controlling, having controlling interest in that property and selling that interest to a cash buyer for a fee would be how I define wholesaling. And yeah, I mean, we have a, we have a pretty, pretty good sized team, full-time office manager, transaction coordinator, dispositions, acquisitions, full-time marketing person. We built a team around, you know, what I define as a wholesale deal. You get a property under contract or to make your fee, your wholesale fee, right. uh, are you and your team going to do an assignment fee? Or are you doing simultaneous closings or what? Both. We do both. All right. So let's make sure our audience understands what we're talking about. Sure. What is an assignment fee? How do you make the money using an assignment? So you're basically, you have a property under contract, right? You are going to assign your interest via an assignment contract it's usually typically a one page agreement that you're you're giving essentially your contract that you have to buy that property to the buyer um for a fee you're selling your contract to buy the property for a fee. there you go and then what is a real estate simultaneous closing so a simultaneous closing is basically going to be you our side so you're going to close the a to b Right. And then at the same time, you're also closing your buyers, closing with you on the B to C. And depending on what state and everything that you're in, sometimes you can use your actual buyer's funds, the fund, the front end transactions. Sometimes you can't. So that that varies. But essentially, you're closing both sides at one time. You're you're buying from the seller and then the buyer is buying from you at the same time. Gotcha. So you're doing about 150 deals this year. How many of those would you estimate are going to be wholesale deals and how many are going to be uh, flips? Uh, 95% will be wholesale deals. Gotcha. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. So, so when it comes to wholesaling, would you agree the two main parts of having a successful wholesaling business is A, you got to have the seller leads coming in as sure. to where you where you're going to locate the properties, right. make a deal. And the other side of that is you got to have the disposition side. So we got acquisition, we got disposition. Right. So let's talk about acquisitions. So, you know, whether we're wholesaling or flipping, no matter what we're doing, we got to find the deals, right? Of course. And so what, what are your favorite methods right now for locating deals to acquire? Sure. So primarily, uh, we, we do a lot of uh, cold calling. Uh, direct mail has been, um, you know, our real like primary strategy for, for years where, I mean, last year, I think we sent like, it was like 1.3 or one and a half million pieces of mail last year. But we, we've shifted over more on the cold calling side. We also do some Facebook ads. We do PPC. And, you know, we do a lot of like referral type strategies as well. Interesting. So let's talk about cold calling. I'm, I'm hearing more and more these days as to how more and more of my uh, colleagues and very successful real estate investors are doing that. So let's talk about cold calling. So let me just open it up. How does your process work on cold calling? 
Yeah, so basically we're going to, you know, we use a 10 line dollar and, you know, we have two, I think we have two, yeah, two full time now. I mean, we're probably going to be doubling that soon, but, you know, we're going to basically reach out, you know, the same type of list that we're going to be mailing. We're going to be calling them and we will do a live transfer if it's a really good lead. If not, you know, we're just trying to gain some type of interest to at least put it in the funnel to where we can move it down the line, follow up, nurture it, and essentially turn it into a deal or a listing, right? And here recently, we even, uh, we've even we been doing more like seller finance type deals, more creative deals. So, you know, now we really have three different options that we're offering. So you can put it on the contract, wholesale it, but your options you're saying is that you can we so also on your team, team, you can also list the property for sale. Right. if You can't work out the numbers, right? Right. Awesome. So your list that sure. you're that you're calling, what are your favorite types of lists to call? I really like so high equity, vacant with some type of lien. You know, that seems to be a really high performing list. And um, those liens can vary. You know, it could be federal or state type of tax lien. It could be an HOA lien, you know, anything along those lines, tax delinquent, but high equity vacant with some type of lien um, tends to perform really well in our market. Okay, excellent. So you get those leads from a list provider, right? No, uh, we use our software for it. Okay, so you got your own software for for getting the leads. Yep. So uh, do you use a skip tracing service to get the telephone numbers? That's in our software as well. <laughs> I got you. I got, is your software for sale? Yeah, it is. It is for sale. Well, look, you might as well, you might, let's go ahead and give my audience, if they want that type of software on finding leads and getting phone numbers, how do they connect with you to get that information? Because, I mean, that's critical right there. I mean, the list, the phone sure. numbers and all that. Uh, so how can somebody connect on that? Yeah, I mean, we could honestly do an entire podcast just on all the features and everything like that it offers. But um, yeah, so they could go to getfmhnow.com um, and then they could read all about it. So that's get, is that F is in, what does FMH stand for? Flip more houses. Okay, go getfmh.com. Now, getfmhnow.com. Gotcha. All right, well, super. Well, we might do another show on that sometime in the future. Sure, sure. So you get your own list from your own software. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And, and your software provides the phone numbers, right? Uh, yeah, we can skip trace in there as well. Nice, nice. So in addition to that, you said that you had 10, your software or the system you use can be dialing 10 numbers at the same time or whatever. You got two full-time people. So obviously nobody is sitting at the telephone punching in phone numbers yeah. you, got, you got software doing that and when somebody picks up you got you got your live person right there right right perfect yeah. so how many people can when you're using a dialer so what's your favorite dollar you know i know mojo's is real popular what do you all use yeah i mean we like call tools call because, tools yeah because mojo is only a three line dollar you know, there's only a couple of them out there that are like the real like 10 line dollars. I think was it six, nine or something like that is, is another one that's a 10 line dollar. Yeah, we, we like call tools a lot. Nice. So this is dialing and you got the operators there. So let's drill down a little bit on this outbound calling technique. So when okay. somebody gets on the phone sure. okay, or answers the phone, and right. you've got your live person right there. How do, what is the quickest way to establish rapport so they don't, what's the secret to keep them from hanging up, hanging the phone up on you and discovering if they have a house for sale? How do you start that conversation? I mean, we, we try to keep it very, because we have went down this road so many times and I know everyone does and it's so easy to overcomplicate this like so initially we always just try to start out with like we bought a pro we bought so many properties throughout like our market now that it's like we're, we're telling the truth when we say we've bought a property near you if we're calling you like we've bought a property like near 
their property. So we'll just say that we bought a property recently over uh, in that neighborhood and we're looking to buy another one. Would you or anyone you know be interested in potentially selling? And depending on what they say there, right? Because, you know, a lot of people are going to hang up with you. We still haven't found this, like that one line sentence that, you know, if they answer the phone and we say these magic words that, you know, we have instant rapport or anything like that, depending on what they say there, if there's any slight interest, you know, we just try to be very, we try the indirect approach, right? So we don't try to pin them against the wall and like dig deep against them. We try to set like a level of like expectations. So it's like, great. If you are interested, this will take like two minutes, you know, it's a hundred percent free, no obligation. We like to at least make you an offer. Um, and typically once we set the expectation, let them know, all right, so I'm only going to have to be on the phone for two minutes, right? Because that's a common mistake that a lot of people make, not setting any kind of expectation. You don't know what these people on the other end of the line have going on in life right now. You know, they could be at on break at work. They could, you know, be on the other line, like whatever the case may be. Um, And it just builds this resistance. And, you know, them not knowing how long it's going to take is like this underlying frustration, right? So we try to set that expectation. We found by doing that, that people tend to open up a lot more and the conversation, uh, you know, always tends to go better when we let them know that. Yeah, that makes sense. So when someone says, well, how did you get my phone number? What's what's the what's the uh, answer to that question? I mean, we we're always just very upfront and honest about it. That's like, look, you know, we we buy a lot of properties, you know, throughout this area. So we, you know, we buy data and you know, in certain neighborhoods that we're looking to buy for properties that meet that criteria, and you know, we'll reach out to uh, those homeowners and ask them if they want to sell or not. And and you know what, like we really don't get a lot of bite back on that because people appreciate from our perspective anyway, because we track that closely, you know, the, just the straight up honesty, you're not trying to pull any smoke and mirrors on them. You're not trying to make it seem like, Oh, you know, Rod, you're down the street, gave me your phone number, anything like that. You're just being very upfront. Like, look, you know, here, here's what we're offering, what we're willing to do. Is this something that interests you? Nice. I like it. So how many people have your acquisitions when, when these outbound calls are going on, how many, once they're on the phone, right. how many people, how many people have you got to talk to, to actually get a property lead sheet or property information? Uh, as far as people to actually talk to, it doesn't take that many. I mean, one out of every, like, you know, 15 people that we actually like get on the phone will tend to you know, at least get info on and like nurture them. Um, but, you know, we'll, so on average, let's just say out of the two, if they call 600 people each, you know, or dial 600 dials per day, if you can get three to four like real viable leads from each one of them per day, like you're doing extremely well as far as calling. That makes sense. Now you say you do, you're still doing a lot of direct mail. You said uh, over the past year, you probably mailed out almost a one and a half million pieces of direct mail. Right. So uh, I know you mentioned you like, one of the lists that you like is high equity uh, with some type of lean on it. But in regards to your direct mail, what are the different categories of lists that you like to mail to? Man, there's a lot of them. Right. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, basically almost anything you could think of with distress or equity, like we're probably hitting, but I mean, from probate to tax delinquent, divorce, bankruptcy, you know, code violations, you know, all the different types of liens. You know, we, we have some more unique list to like, uh, you know, addictions and people over a certain age that are probably looking to relocate or move into like assisted living. And, you know, of course, all the normal ones as well that, you know, everyone talks about the absentee owners and the vacant. But yeah, we hit a variety of lists. Awesome. And your getfmhnow.com has got all those lists in there, right? Yeah, except for except for a couple. We don't have, at the moment, we don't have probate in there, which we are working on uh, getting in there. And we, we have federal and state tax liens, but we don't have just the straight tax delinquent in there yet. But the majority of all the rest of them are already in there. And cash buyers are in there as well. Gotcha. Now, along with that, or in addition to that, 
you mentioned uh, you mentioned to me in the past that you just really get stoked about you know the sales and marketing side, and so right. that's what that's what we're talking about. So we've been talking about you know finding the deals. So then, on if you're wholesaling ninety five percent of your deals, right. you've got to have a buyer's list that's fresh all the time of, of people that you market to. So two questions. Sure. How, how do you continue to build your buyers list? I assume the, what percentage of your buyers would say are real estate investors that are going to, you know, carry on with the deal. So this is one thing I talk about this with people all the time. It's, you know, your buyers list, like it, no matter how big it is, like I know people that have buyers lists that are like, you know, 80,000, 90,000 buyers, right? But on that list, maybe you have an actual thousand or 500, like true, real, like buyers that are going to buy consistently from you. And this is what I always typically see, um, it, you know, and I'm not saying that this is the case just 100% of the time. But, you know, the majority of the time, it's typically a smaller portion of your list are going to be your core group of buyers that are going to consistently buy from you. And, you know, that's why it's always important, too, because the market changes, right? It ebbs and flows. So, you know, the type of buyer changes. That's why we're always working on building our list. And we make part of the reporting for dispositions going out there and bringing in and recruiting new buyers every week. So let's say you got someone that's new and they want to start building a buyer's list. Mm -hmm. right? where, where, where do you go as a new wholesaler to find buyers for your wholesale deals? Uh, I mean, what I would do, and I mean, I was doing this, uh, you know, when I first started uh, and a lot of people like overlook it and that's LinkedIn. Like there is some huge, huge real estate investing groups on LinkedIn, right? That have a lot of buyers in there, a lot of real estate professionals. So LinkedIn groups is a really good one. Um, and meetup.com, most of every city has real estate investor, like a, a meetup group. And I'm not saying necessarily to go to an actual meetup, but you can email that entire list right? So if you have a property, you can send an email uh, when you're a member out to everybody that's a member of that group, which is a great way too, if you prompt them to go sign up or let them let you know that they're interested in buying consistently and what they want to buy, you can add them to your list. But yeah, without even having to go actually to a physical meetup, you can email, you know, any of those meetup groups when you're a member. And then also Facebook, real estate investing group and networking with other wholesalers in those groups are a great way to, you know, sell your deals when you're first getting started. Nice. I have a strategy. I don't know if you've ever uh, done it or anybody on your team, James. Okay. Uh, it ties in with what I already do. So about 25% of the deals that myself and my team do actually come from foreclosures to where people have been served a notice of default. So okay. about I'm not talking pre-NODs. I'm talking they're actually been served a notice of default. And we've got this eight-letter campaign that we mail to them and get a crazy nice. get a crazy high response. So we already track, um, physically track from public record all the notices of default. And okay. we track we track them right into the end until they're sold. So right. obviously either the bank takes them back or a real estate investor buys them. Well, some end users buy them, but not very, very many. Right. We track who actually ends up buying from the courthouse those foreclosures. And so that right there is like, for us, one of the perfect lists. Yeah, that's a great strategy as well. Of real estate investors. Have you ever done that? Are you on your team? We, we didn't do it specifically for, uh, for auctions, but you know, yeah, what we'll do is like, if we end up losing a property or whatever, we know that we were close on, then we'll always usually like, you know, we have a spreadsheet that we keep in a VA that like monitors it and, uh, you know, they'll follow along like that property, you know, to see like when it sells and then when it sells, we'll pull whoever that buyer is and then reach out to them and try to get them on a the list. That's awesome. We do so that. So you've got the list, you maintain the list of active real estate investors for you to, you know, to, to sell right. to. Now, when you have a new property under contract. Right. And you and your team are looking to assign that contract. 
how do you communicate with your uh, buyers list? And, and so what's your disposition process look like of getting your assignment fee? Right, right. Okay, yeah. No, so we have everything that's uh, managed in Podio, the where, you know, we, we've spent, gosh, man, I mean, probably $10,000 or so, like, building out our own CRM the way that we want to build out. So uh, there's tasks that are triggered throughout. As soon as the property goes to, uh, you know, on the board to be sold, you know, then our dispositions immediately will go ahead and create a flyer. He'll uh, send a text out to, uh, you know, to the buyers, and then he'll follow that with an email. And then if we haven't sold it by then, which typically we would have, then he'll also, uh, you know, go into the meetup groups and stuff. But um, another thing that we have done recently and over the last couple of months, and I know some other people are doing this as well, and I'm not trying to like get into the software thing, but that this is typically, this is what we use is we'll like pull the property in the software, draw like a radius around it, and it'll give us all the buyers. Um, and then sometimes we'll just skip trace them. If we like, when we're looking maybe in an area that our buyers aren't like super hungry for, you know, that we know of, or we can't pinpoint one exactly that we're like, all right, so this ought to be a really, really good property that's going to move fast. If it's something a little bit different, we'll do that, skip trace those buyers and reach out to them. And just about every time we've done that, we've sold the deal to a new buyer. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, James, I tell you what, I can't believe how the time's been going by. I could talk to you all day. And so let's go ahead and give out your sure. free gift, your free gift that we promised everybody at the beginning of the show. Tell everybody again what it is and how they can get your free gift. Uh, absolutely. So I did a training, uh, you know, not long ago, like a couple weeks ago on YouTube. Um, live that, you know, from 10 years of doing this business, if I started all over, but knowing what I know now, what would I do to get to $10,000 as fast as possible? I mean, you know, during the live, I gave away some cool prizes and stuff like that for the winners. But e either way, so I'm going to, I did record all that training and I'm going to give it away. I believe it's through, you know, through jconnor.com, right? And we were going to do a forward slash 10K challenge. Is that right? I think that's right. So, yes. Yeah, so, uh, everybody go to www.jayconner, J A Y C O N N E R.com forward slash 10, the number 10, 1 0 K challenge, and you'll be able to uh, download for free the uh, gift right there from James. Thank you so much, James, for that. Now, James, before we sign off here from the show, sure. Given you now know what you know 10 years into this real estate investing game, if you were starting all over today and you knew and you now know what you've learned over the past 10 years, how would you start out and what would you do different? Sure, sure. Um, and I get and I go over all this uh, so a few different ways in the in the training, but what I would do honestly is pull pull a list, right? A highly one of the highly distressed lists. And I would start calling, them, you know, and I wouldn't even worry about, you know, I'd skip trace it and start calling. I wouldn't worry about fancy dialers, any of that stuff for the time being. But I like getting in there, get your hands dirty, like any of the students that I have that, you know, I, I always get them when they're first starting out. Get in there and like, you know, start calling some people, you know, get hung up on and, and everything else. And that's really like you're learning a lot about the business as you go along. Um, and you get in the trenches a little bit. And it isn't even about paying your dues or anything like that. It's what you learn in the process will help you be that much more successful over time. But I would say pull a highly distressed list, skip trace it, and start calling those people. I love it. I love it. Well, James, what's your parting words of advice to our audience? And a, a, a large part of my audience are newbies. are still looking to do their very first real estate deal. Sure. But what's the best advice you can give for a new real estate investor? Uh, I'll just say this. Don't give up. This business is, it's an easy business, but, or it's a simple business, but it's not necessarily easy, right? Like it's all about building momentum. You know, it, when you first get started, you might not go out there in the first month and do your first deal. So always keep in the back of your mind, how bad do you want it? This business can change your life. It's changed my life. It's changed Jay's life. Many other people we know, it's changed their lives. And it can do the same for you. 
but you got to be willing to commit to it, right? And go through the process, be willing to put in the work and build up the, that momentum. And once you get that going, I mean, it's, it's incredible what you can actually do. That's awesome. James, thank you so much for being on the show. Everybody take advantage uh, of what James has offered here. You can uh, learn about his software and finding uh, motivated sellers at getfmhnow.com. You can go to jayconner.com, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash 10K challenge and get uh, James's free training with that. So everyone, thank you for joining in uh, to the show here. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. And here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level.